let us go to the word of God, please. If we might go to the book of John. Let us rush to the book of John. Let's open the book of John, chapter 19. From verse 10 to 11, just two verses. And we will read the other verses later. Did you find it? Then Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? Jesus answered, You could, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Can I repeat verse 11? Jesus answered, you could know, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you as the greater sin, let's pray. Father, thank you for your wonderful word in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Today, I want us to go and speak under the head heading, He was crucified for us. He was crucified for us. We just read a beautiful passage in the word of God that is depicting when Jesus was arrested and taken to the Pilate. And when he reached there, he was speaking to them, and most of the time when they ask questions, Jesus won't, an won't answer. He will just keep quiet. And now we are hearing Pilate saying unto Jesus, why don't you answer? Don't you know that I have power to crucify you? I have power to kill you. I have power to do anything I want with you. The words that Jesus answered, he said, you know what, there was nothing you were going to do to me if you were not given the authority from above. Everything that is happening today or from yesterday until today or going forward, it is because authority was given to mankind or to the kingdom on earth so that the kingdom on earth can do whatever that they want to do with him. Why? Because it was prophesied long time ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus, when he came to earth, he came because there was a purpose that he came for. This purpose was for him to come and die for you and me. His purpose was for him to come to earth and register. Can somebody say register? You know, when a child wants to go to university, he must do what? He must go and register. Okay. Now, when Jesus came to earth, he was coming so that he can register us back to the kingdom of God. If Jesus didn't come to earth and die, it means me and you we were not or never going to see the kingdom of God. Now for him to come to earth, he wanted to come and register me and you. I'm not speaking of how you register or how you do it. But when you want to register, you do it on your own self. When you want it, you go and register. Like when you want to go to the university, you go and register, isn't it? 
There are so many different kinds of, uh, of universities, but you choose the one that which you love and you go and register there. So when you are living here on earth, you also choose the kingdom you want to be registered in. Am I, am I talking to you? In other words, I want to speak this thing when I'm starting to tell you this issue. There is a kingdom that you belong to. There is nobody who is in between. Is either you are in the kingdom of light or you are in the kingdom of darkness. There is no kingdom of between light and dark. It's either dark or light. So now Jesus came here to earth so that he can register us back to the kingdom so that we can make a decision on our own as children who are here on earth. And we say, Lord, I'm coming back to you. In other words, he was here to open, an, uh, open a way for us so that we can be able to go to heaven. We can be able to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Now here we are hearing at the end of his road, my fellow Natsalaya Hai. Jesus Uberekile has worked on earth different things. People were seeing it. Everything that Jesus was doing here on earth, he was teaching those who were there so that those who were there will be able to come and teach us so that we can also be able to follow. Like when you go to university and you say, I want to do Bachelor of Science. You will hear them saying there was a scientist whom, 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 who did one, two, three, four. And after that, somebody came and developed the strategy that he laid. And it became what, what, what. And another one came what, and followed and followed and followed. Until you go to that same university and you study what they have started years ago. So in other words, here today... We are listening to what Jesus has done when he was here on earth so that we can be able to live accordingly in his kingdom. It means when you didn't go in through Jesus Christ in the kingdom, you are not going to live according to the plan of the kingdom. Are you hearing me? If you didn't go in through Jesus Christ, you want to be able to live accordingly, according to the way of the kingdom. Why? Because you didn't enter through him. In other words, Jesus is the door into the kingdom. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. So there is nobody, no other savior that I know today. As old as I am, I only know only one door, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So today we are speaking about when he was about to be crucified to open that door. Jesus went through a lot of things so that this door that we are enjoying today can be opened. If Jesus, all these things didn't happen to him, this door of Christianity was never going to be there today. So Lichon, we are able to stand, scream and shout, hey, I am a Christian, I am born again, but we didn't enter through him. When we enter through him, that's where we become true Christians. Can somebody say true Christian? I was fortunate when we started uh, to come here in Gauteng, we were attending a church. Our pastor loved to say, Muzalwani Zot. They didn't enter through the door, they entered through the backyard. And they found themselves in the house of the Lord. Now today I just want us to acknowledge and know the genesis of our Christian life. What made us to be Christians? And let us value 
the thing that made us to be Christians today. The thing that is of concern today is, yes, we are called Christians, but we don't value the way to Christianity. The way to Christianity is not so important to us. Yes, there is a way we are Christians, we are going there. But we don't value the way that takes us there. It's like this. When you have your mother and your father, you are born in a family. And when you are born in that family, you have a, you have a mother and a father. And this mother and this father, they give you laws of that family, isn't it? And when they give you the laws of the family, they are saying to you, my son, my daughter, in our family, we do things this way. Now, when you are in that family, living in that family, doing things the way they are doing them, you are respecting the way that brought you to that family. That's why the Bible says respect your father and your mother so that your days on earth may be long. Isn't it? So now, if you are in a house and you don't respect your mother and father, you are doomed. Ruchechika doom. Hallelujah. So this thing is just the same. When you are in the kingdom of God, there is a father and a mother, both in one person. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now when you don't honor and respect Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when you are in the kingdom, you are doomed. In other words, there is nothing that is right that you will do. And there is nothing that you will stand and there is nothing that you will show that indeed you are following Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Why? Because you are not respecting him. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. As the person that is close to you, are you respecting Jesus? Why we have read Pilate say to him, are you keeping quiet? Speak something now. Don't just be quiet. Because there were a multitude of people that were standing there that were speaking against him. It was a plot against Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to go and open the book of Matthew. I'll just try to be quick, quick at least so that we can finish a little bit early. May God help us. Matthew chapter 27 verse 16. Most of the verses, I'll just explain them so that we can be able to save time. But I want you to understand what the Bible says. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Verse 16, it says, And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they have gathered together, I'm sorry. When they have gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that they, they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, after Pilate has spoken with Jesus, that are you keeping quiet? Don't you know that I have authority to kill you? Or to command that they kill you. And Jesus answered, no. You are not doing this because you have power. You are doing this because you have given, been given the power to do so. You have been allowed to do so. Then because he realized himself. 
that the men that they are talking about and the things that they are speaking about this man are not the things that he can read through this man. When a person is standing in front of you, you can read through him. You can see what kind of a person is this person. Now move to show. Here is a man standing amongst a multitude of men. And this person, they are saying, no, he's been blaspheming. He's been saying our law is not right. He's been doing this. He's been doing that. But this man does not answer. He just keeps quiet. Now, Pilate was able to recognize or uh-uh. There is an envy here. It is not an issue of this man is guilty. There is an issue of this man might be doing something better than somebody who is a priest or a high priest or a governor or something. That is why they are saying this unto this man. Now, as Pilate was saying, my Bible says... His wife sent for him and said, don't have anything to do with that man. That man is a just man. And Pilate had already recognized this man is a just man. When he was in trouble, he will wait for heaven to speak for him. He will allow the will of the Father to be perfected through him. Even though to go to the cross was his aim of coming to earth. It was painful for him that day to come into contact with whatever that was happening. But the issue here is he know, he knew that this day he has to die. Why? Because he is doing the will of the Father. So now, after that, when we go down reading and reading from verse there where we have read until verse 22, the Bible says the people, you know, the high priest and all these ones that were there, they started influencing people that were there. And when they start influencing people that were there, those people started screaming and shouting, no, 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 this man is guilty. And now he said to them, by your law, when it is this day, this festival, we have to release somebody. Can you tell the person that is close to you, somebody must be released. Now, that day, when Pilate said those words, he was thinking the innocency that he is seeing. Everyone is seeing it. And he found out that these people, they don't see the innocency. They were not seeing it. What was there inside them was mourner, jealous, fell. Marantu, the thing that makes me to be happy, children of God, is this jealousy was opening a door for you and me so that we can go back to the kingdom of God. The jealousy of those people 2,000 years ago. They made me to have me and you to have the authority to enter into the kingdom of God. So when they were doing this jealousy envious against Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they didn't know that they were giving birth to a generation like a generation of you and me. A generation that is afraid of God. This God was called the God of the Israelites, isn't it? Now he is also God called the God of vendors. The God of Pedis, the God of Cosas, the God of Zulus, the God of Shangans, the God of Stanas, the God of whomever. If you want this, him to be your God. Are you hearing me? He was called the God of the Israelites. And when Jesus came, he was coming to open a door. So that the little Naluwe Namuna. He saved me. He made me to be what I am today. By him I've been saved. He went to the cross for me. He died for me. And now he is called my God. Now when those people were envious. The Bible says. Going down with it. Chapter 27. 
I'm just going to speak and explain. You'll understand me, isn't it? And when I'm speaking, you'll be reading right there in your Bible. So now the Bible says, when Pilate wanted to offer them one person to be set free, he knew there was a very bad man. And this man is these people, the same people who took this man to, to, to Pilate and said, hey, this person is very troublesome. We are tired of him. We don't want to live with him anymore. Can you lock him up? Can you do something with him? And they locked him up. So now, Bobby Lato, when he saw the innocency in Jesus Christ, he offered them Barabbas or Barnabas. And he said, from these two men, whom do you want me to release? He was expecting what they would say, Jesus of Nazareth. But opposite was the case. When he asked them, whom do you want me to release to you to set free today? They said, no, give us Barabbas. We want to live with him again. Even if he can go on killing our people, it's fine. Even if he can go, I don't know what is it that he was doing that is bad. But even if he can go on stealing from us, it's fine. But we want Jesus to be crucified. Can somebody say hallelujah? You can release for us Barabbas. But if for Jesus, he has to be crucified. This one must be crucified. And the Bible says, when they were saying so, Pilate asked for a dish to wash his hands. And when he has washed his hands, he said, Na kinamula tu mo madinga munau. I don't have anything to do with the blood of this man. Because this man is a just man. And these foolish people, they say, the blood of this man must be, be upon us and also upon our own children. In other words, we are carrying the guilt of killing him. And this guilt must be upon us and our own children. And when I was reading the Bible, going down with it, I started realizing, oh, what kind of a love it is that God has given unto us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that day, God made these people, the Jews, to be blind. They couldn't see clearly. They couldn't recognize clearly. They couldn't see things the way they were supposed to see them. I believe it, it was my time, or maybe if it was your time. When they say they must kill Jesus, I would say no. This man has healed me. By the way, remember the Bible says, when he was taken from the garden by people who came to arrest him, you know, everyone who was close to him ran away. They all ran away. People that were close, that were called apostles, there were no way to be found. So now when he was there, when people were being asked, there was nobody to stand with him. Remember, even Peter was told, you are going to deny me. He said, no, Lord, I will die with you. But now when he started to see, can you tell the person that is close to you, see, when he start to see and realize the pain, the trouble that Jesus was going through, everyone started to say, no. No. I don't know him. 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 And the people of the place, 
got courage and they become encouraged because there was nobody who was standing with him and the Bible said they shouted when Pilate asked what is it that you want me to do with this man they said crucify him hallelujah in Mark chapter 15 verse 13 it said they crowd out again loud and say crucify him Kill him. We no longer want him in our midst. Yes, we saw he has healed people. Yes, we saw things were happening. Yes, we saw he were doing things amongst us, but we don't need him anymore. Kill him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right there in verse 26, the Bible says, immediately after Pilate washed his hands, in the book of Matthew 27, we are going to look at it so much. After they've said so and screamed and shout, his blood will be wanted upon our heads and our children. Crucify him, crucify him. Then the best thing that Pilate saw he could do is to beat him up. Maybe he wanted to beat him up so that he can satisfy them. The Bible says they took him, they took him out, and they beat him. In my Bible, New King James Fashion, it says they scourged him. They were beating him up so that the blood can come out. They were not beating him up to save him. In other words, they were beating him up so that if he can die even before they crucify him, it will be better. But now they beat him up. They undressed him. Beat him up and beat him up and beat him up. Even after being beaten up, he was still standing. Can you tell the person that is close to you? He was still standing. When I was reading the Bible... I went and searched for the word scourged. Why do the Bible say he was scourged? And I find an explanation of saying the beating definitely was supposed to bring out flesh and blood. One stroke was supposed to come out with flesh and blood must follow. A stroke was supposed to come out with flesh and blood was supposed to follow. And these people who were beating him up were Roman soldiers. They were not just people like me and you who eat pap and porridge and soup every day. They were people who were trained to interrogate and beat up a person. So that a person can come out with the truth. Now in all this ordeal, when everything was happening, my Bible says my Savior, my Christ was quiet. He didn't say anything. They beat him up and they beat him up and he didn't say anything. Now when they beat him up and they beat him up, they finished. They say, no, it's not enough. What is it that we can do again? Because this man is not answering. We have beaten him up. They say they took out his clothes. And they put on him a rope. Like a rope of a king. And somebody went away and took thorns and made a crown. From the crown... They knitted it and they came and put it on the head of Jesus. Just put it in your mind and remember and remind yourself. This is a crown of thorns. Somewhere, somehow thorns must enter into his flesh. Now when they were putting on this crown, he even didn't say anything. He was quiet. They put this crown on top of his head. And they started mocking. All hail the king. All hail the king of the Jews. 
All hail the king. The Bible says they mocked him. The Bible says they spat on him. Saliva was going on top of him. And there was nothing he could do. Remember, this man has been beaten up. This man's blood was oozing all over his body. To make it sure that indeed he died, they even put a crown of thorns on top of his head. But even though they put a crown of thorns on his head, he never died. Can you tell the person that is close to you, he never died? After doing all this kind of thing, the mocking and the clapping and whatever and whatever they wanted to do on him, they want now to lead him to Golgotha. Go and read uh, Matthew 27. It will explain anything. Everything. They want now to take him to Golgotha. They want to crucify him. Let me, let me, I want you to look at this thing so that you can understand it. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Mutu. They search for a person to show them who is Jesus. Why the Bible says they all looked alike. Are you hearing me? So now Judas was asking Iscariot, was robbed. And he said, I'm going to show you who Jesus is. The person that I am going to hug is the right one. So now logically, I said what? Logically, this man is arrested today. Hmm? And when he was arrested today, he again went to court the same day. And when he went to court the same day, after doing all this thing and judging him and saying whatever they can say about him, they did whatever they wanted to do on him. There was already a cross, a goji cross, a scary cross that was already prepared for him. I'm now speaking about logic. They didn't spare this man. They didn't give time to this man. After beating him up, doing whatever they do, mocking him, spitting on him, saying whatever they want to say, there comes a road to Golgotha. This man is tired because he was being beaten up the whole night, the whole morning. But thank God for Jesus Christ. He never died before the purpose was accomplished. They did all that they did to him. After doing whatever they did to him, they made him to carry his own cross. And Jesus carried his own cross. He went out with it. And they were saying whatever they are saying. They were saying, all hail king of Jews. Hey, all hail. Others were saying, my Bible says, he used to save others. What about himself today? He used to speak for others. What about himself today? And he was moving with this cross. And he was going to Calvary, Golgotha. With the cross along the way, they find a person called Simon. They called him to carry the cross for him. Because they saw maybe power was going out of him. But still, he was still alive. <laughs> Can you tell the person that is close to you, he was still alive? After all the ordeal that made all the apostles to run away, Jesus was still alive. The Bible says when women that were there, when they saw him, they were crying. Crying because of the things they were seeing. Crying because of the pain that was inflicted on him. People started crying for him. The thing, only thing that they wanted, you know what it is that they wanted? They wanted him to deny the kingdom of God. They just wanted him to say, no, I am not the son of God. And they were going to let him go. But among 
Because all those things that were happening to him that day, he kept his peace and kept silent. The Bible says they went with him to Golgotha. And when they reached Golgotha, after everything that has happened to him, after everything that they've done to him along the road, along the road when he was waking, the Bible says they were even beating him up and pushing him. In other words, he was falling all the time when he was going up the mountain. Look at this person. He was caught early in the morning. And by then he hadn't eaten anything. After that, he went to the court. He was questioned. He was beaten. He, everything was done upon him. Still, after that, he has to go up the mountain. Jesus went up the mountain of Golgotha. And when they reached there, in verse 31, they say, they took off the robe, his clothes. The robe that they gave him, and they gave him his own clothes. And led him to be crucified. Now, when they took him to Golgotha, a place where it's called a place of the skull, Tony Zabaf, the Bible says they crucified him. Can you tell somebody that is close to you they crucified him? They crucified Jesus. Right there where we have read in verse 31. It said they crucified him. It's over. He is not where they wanted. The Bible says after crucifying him, I'll give it, I'll, I'll say so. You still sit there and watch over the body. Can you tell the person that is close to you? They watched over the body. He was not yet dead, but they watched over him. Sat there and watched. And they said, this man said, in other words, let me tell you what I believe in. These people were believing that what Jesus says is the truth. The problem is, the government that was ruling by then, they couldn't speak it out. This man is telling the truth. Now what they did is, when they were told to go and guard him, they just went there, sit down under the cross or there and watched him. On the cross. They guarded him. Because mission, it was a real mission. Mission, the calling upon him was not just a mere calling. Was a calling with a purpose, a purpose to change nations, a purpose to change generations, a purpose to change the life of people, a purpose to change the destinies of people. That is why, when he was crucified, somebody has to guard this person because they knew they knew he was having a purpose. Why? Because it was prophesied a long time ago. Or a savior is going to be born. A savior that will buy back his own people to God. A savior that will come and take back his own people to the kingdom of God. A savior that will come and take us back into the presence and the glory of God. A savior that will come and die for us at the cross so that me and you, we can stand up bravely and say, I am saved. Today I can speak like a man who knows, like a woman who knows where she's going. By the blood of Jesus, I was saved. This man was beaten. This man was scourged. Now after crucifying him on the cross, the Bible says they watched over him 
until he died. Those soldiers that were there, they heard everything, they saw everything. And Jesus died. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now let me explain to you, children of God. Today we are saved. Today we are born again. Today we are calling ourselves Christians, followers of Christ. But the things that we do does not show that we are following Christ. Does not show that we acknowledge his death on the cross. Does not show that we see the importance of the way he died for us. This was extraordinary. When they were beating him up, when they were mocking him, when they were spitting on him, when they were saying whatever, when they were pushing him around, doing whatever they were doing, he did not die. He did not faint. Do you know why? He was supposed to be finished at the cross. If Jesus died before he reached Golgotha, salvation was not supposed to be here today. If Jesus has died before he reached Golgotha, Christianity was not supposed to be here today. Because if he has died along the road, they were supposed to have taken him to a mortuary if mortuaries were there. Am I right? They were supposed to buy a, cof cos a coffin if coffins were there. And they were supposed to prepare for his burial. Now, this thing didn't happen that way, children of God. All these things happened to this wonderful man. I call him wonderful because what he came for here on earth was wonderful. After doing all these kind of things to him, he never died. He never subsided. He never fainted. He never lose heart. He never fell. He went on and on and on and on and on until he reached the cross and they put nails on him. After putting nails on him, they took up the cross and they put an inscription on top of his head and they say, this is the king of the Jews. Now let me prophesy and tell you what Christ has come to do on this earth. He was here to be the king of your life. He was here to die for you so that you can inherit heaven. He was here to die for you so that you can see life. He was here to die for you so that you can see breakthrough in your life. He was here to die for you so that you can be a person that you are today. If he didn't die, let me tell you, child of God, you were not supposed to be here. That is why I said, you know, people who back off, who don't know where they are going, who don't know about their Christianity, they don't know how much this man has suffered for us. He suffered for us. He suffered for us. Why are you playing with your salvation? Can you ask the person that is close to you? Why are you playing with your salvation? Today you are born again. After two months. Because God gives you a salary. You are no longer born again. You go back to where you were. A few years ago. And when we meet you, you say to us, it's because these days I'm busy. You don't know the sacrifice that Jesus has done for you. You don't know how much he suffered for you so that you can find yourself seated on that chair you are sitting on today. You know, there are many people who are wishing right now to be in the house of the Lord. 
but they couldn't even stand up and come and say, I am here, I'm here to worship God. But you have the grace, the grace of God upon you. That is why you are seated on that chair today. But let me tell you, one of them, don't play with that salvation. It is so, so, so much expensive. You can go everywhere, you can never find it. You can go all over the world, you can never find it. It is only found in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. After crucifying him, it's like I'm seeing them. I call them fools. Because all the time they were with him, all the time they saw what he has been doing in the lives of people. This is what is happening during these last days to us. We are seeing by our own eyes, but we don't believe that God is doing it. We don't believe that God can do it. We don't believe that God can do it. We don't believe that he is the king of kings and he reigneth forever. That day when he was crucified, it was his way, not our way, for him to go back to the father. Then after that he went back... He rose again. And when we rose again, the Bible says he went back to the Father. And they came again. They came. And all others, they had. He has risen. There is nobody in the grave. He is alive. He's not there. The first people to go there to check if he is there or not there, the apostles, Bomma, Maria, they also went there and they stood, they said the, 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 the grave is like going down, it's like a cave. They looked in, they find the clothes, his clothes were laid there nicely dead in order but the body was not there and I asked myself why Christians again because my Bible told me that when he was with them he explained everything that was going to happen to him and he told them again on the third day I'm going to rise again but still can you tell the person that is close to you but still going to check if he's still there because I heard he's no longer there so when they saw that he's no longer there this is the Christianity of us these days we start jumping he told us we will meet him in Galilee. Let us make haste and go to Galilee. Because he told us he will meet us there. Now it means we have to go there. But by the time of his suffering, nobody was there for him. They were nowhere to be found. Others were hiding. Others were run away to wherever they can run to. But the issue is that I want you to realize. Do you realize the pain that was inflicted on this man so that you can find yourself being a beautiful person that you are today? After the pain that this man has been afflicted on him being a successful person that you are today for you to be successful one papa it is because he agreed and laid down his life for you I give my girl most of the time the plus of the vibrator come home who vibrate like a row at dinner foundation can you ask the person that is close to you do your Christianity have foundation? Sorry, if you can't But 
If you want to see our pollution does not have foundation. When you feel, when I'm, or if I'm not sure, so can I do it? You know, to one of them, but I'm going to say, "Julie, five mission." You know, from Thala, but now let's go to Oya. Don't hate me, please. I'm giving an example, isn't it? Because our salvation does not have foundation. Muteo. The foundation of our salvation is not BJ Makananisa, it's not T E Makananisa, it's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When things are not working for you, you go down on your knee and you say, Jesus, I've been faithful, I've been doing what you want, but oh God Almighty, help me. And he will come to your help. Whenever you need him, what you do is call. You know, Jesus died so that there can be open network from earth to heaven. And number two, when he died, after opening the network, he wanted us to have friendship with the Father. He wanted us to have friendship with the Abba Father Daddy. When you want to speak with the Daddy, you don't go through me, you go straight to him. A way has been opened. When he agreed to die again, he wants you to have a fellow, fellowship. Can you tell the person that is close to you, fellowship? Those people of old, when they want to speak to God, they will go through priests. I get it? They will make sacrifices so that their prayers can be heard. Now we, me and you, as long as I draw closer to God, as long as I do the will of God, as long as I follow the commandments of God, my fellowship with God becomes activated more and more and more and more and more each and every day. That is why when we are close so much, when I say daddy, he said, mm hmm. But when you are far, when you say daddy, it takes six days for you to hear, hmm. Are you here? Can you tell the person that is close to you, when you are close to God, when you call him, he answers the same time. Now, because you are, now you are far, when you call, yes, he answers the same time. But because you are very far, the answer reaches you after six days. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. But the issue that is so, so important today is he died for you. Don't play with this salvation. He died for your soul. He died for your spirit. He died for your life. He sacrificed his own, making it available to be scourged by people so that me and you, we can inherit the kingdom of God. There is a song is pediri hana jalo ri pulushi chwe ri tseba go rapela go ri dile batho machachiari ya bona hela it is only through the cross of Jesus Christ If you look down on the cross of Jesus Christ you will never make it That is why I will go to pray and I will cry say father if our generation our children can acknowledge the way Christ died for us. They will never play when they come to church. You will hear a young person telling you, Mama, you know why I did this thing? You know, I was robbed. You know, I was tempted. If you know the blood that was shed for you, you will never say I was tempted because you will be standing on your stand. Why? Because you always realize the kind of pain Jesus felt for you. If we can recognize what Jesus has done for us, you will never go back again. When I finished reading, 
the Bible, when God was speaking me through this, I was seated on my bed. I started crying. I said, Lord, if you win Mandela, cherish missionary church, can just realize how much this man suffered and died for us. We will never play in Saip in front of God. We will never make ourselves like we are born again, whereas we are not born again. We will never play in the house of our father. Why? Because he died for my sins. Jesus died for our sins. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. I want to finish off. But I want to finish when we go and read in the book of Isaiah. Before we go to Isaiah, just write it down. In the book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 18. The Bible says Jesus explained everything that was going to happen to him, to the apostles before it started happening. In other words, they knew what was going to happen to Jesus Christ. But still, they backed off during the last minutes. But in the book of Isaiah, I love this verse. I want us to read it. Marndi Isaiah. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Most of us born again Christians, we love quoting the last line. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And you don't even understand the kind of stripes that Jesus met. Or the kind of stripes that Jesus had that day. Amen. Now, in the, don't close there. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, 24 and 25, it says, He himself bore our sins on his own body on the tree. That we having died to sin, when we died to sin, we might be able to live to righteousness. And by whom stripes, his stripes, we were healed. In other ways, what was written, written years ago in the book of Isaiah, prophesied by the prophet Isaiah, came to happen or came to existence the day Jesus was crucified. And by his stripes, we are healed. So I have a question with you today. Do you recognize what Jesus has done for you at Calvary? Do you see the weight of what Jesus has done for you at Calvary? Hmm? Can I ask again? Do you see the weight of what Jesus has done for you at Calvary? Number one, I said he wanted us to be registered. I get it. He wanted to open the network. He wanted us to have fellowship with God. And now when we have, when we have read, he said, he wanted us, these sins that we are having, to carry them all. And we are left free, not having any burden upon us. Why? Because he wants us to be free and live freely. And again, he wanted us to have peace. He endured all this pain so that you can have peace. 
And all in all, all the stripes, the pains, the head, the shock of fella, every couple of legal, the shock of fella, ten nobody deal a mum million wahai. No dear Lauru and no hono will a lauriki forty le. All the wounds that were upon his body was made so that you and me can be able to say, by his stripes, I am healed. Now you can never be able to say it by your mouth faithfully and with confidence when you don't realize what he has done for you. It's only people who realize. That is why you will hear somebody saying, even if it can rain cats and dogs, I'm going nowhere. I will die in Christ. I will stay in Christ until Christ himself does something in my life. Children of God, let us recognize the one who died for us. Let us keep the faith. Let us hold on. Let us stay. Let us tell ourselves until, until he blesses me, I will never let him go. I was born here in this house. I was raised in this house. I saw things happening right in this house. Now I'm seeing discouragement. Now I'm seeing things falling apart. Now, this is what I'm telling myself today. I will never leave this home because now there is poverty. Because now there is hunger. Because now things are not going the right way. I will hold on until God himself reveals himself again to us. As long as we are walking in the right way. The thing that is needed in us Christians let us recognize the sacrifice that was done for us. If you don't recognize the sacrifice, that is why it becomes easy for you to go back and say, I was tempted. If we can just have 10 people in a church, we will reach far. We lack those kind of people that recognize the sacrifice that has been done for them. Long, long time ago, I heard this story. I was still young, but though I don't forget this story. A certain old man, our pastor, those days, when we were still foolish and thinking we were wise, I believe my sister always rem also remembers this story, if I can say it. This old man will stand there and, and he will preach. Usually when he preaches, he will cry. And say, people don't understand what Jesus did for us. You know, he said, it's like a baby. A small baby. A five-month-old, six-month-old baby. The baby cannot do anything for himself or herself, isn't it? And now the mother went away. And when the mother comes back, he sees, she sees people moving around the house and start asking, what's wrong, what's wrong? And some other people will start holding her and holding her. No, don't go, don't go, don't go. Why? Because the house is on fire. And this woman, because she realizes there's a baby inside, these ones they don't know, but she knows my baby is inside. She will fight to go inside the house. And she went inside the house, carried the baby, and came out with the baby. So during this process, when she was doing all these things, the logs started falling on her, and she was bent all over the body. Now when the child grew up, she asked, Mommy, I don't understand. You are not like other mothers. Your body is bent all over. You've got scars all over your body. Mama, what happened to you? And the mother will explain, my son, my daughter, if I didn't have these scars, you were not supposed to be alive today. If I don't have his, these scars, you were supposed to be dead today. Now, children of God, if Jesus can come now and appear before us and we see the scars on him, we see the pain that was afflicted on him just by looking at the scars and everything that happened, do you think you'll go back to that way of sin again? 
Why? Because if those scars were not there, you were not supposed to be called a born again Christian today. He made a sacrifice and sacrificed his life so that you and I can have peace and live forever. Now, why play by your own salvation? Salvation is our right. We don't have to beg it. We just go there and say, today, today, I make a decision. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. I want to walk with you, God. I want to be beside you always, all the days of my life. And if you can just say that it is granted to you. Now, when it is granted to you, why? Can you ask the person that is close to you, why? Why do you go back to your sin again? I was sitting with somebody someday, we were just talking, talking, talking and laughing. And she said, Mama, if you don't have a child, you don't have a child. You don't Mothers who are born again, they will explain you. And when you are explaining, what about Jesus? Because you are the one to rectify this one that is out of the way. If you are seeing any wrong in the life of this, why don't rectify so that you can all go to heaven? The thing that we are crying for today is not riches. It's not prosperity. It's not a good life, eh? It no, it's not millions and everything. Jesus is coming back. We are crying to go to heaven. I don't know what you are here for. But I, let me tell you, I am here to serve God until he comes back. I want to see heaven one day. I want to see him face to face one day. So that I can be able to tell him face to face. Jesus, thank you for what you have done for me. I don't know. What you think about your salvation. And I don't know the level of your salvation today. But I want to make a challenge to you today. Christ died for you. And how do you value your Christianity? 